Welcome to Level Up, the show where we cover all manner of tips, tricks, and strategies to make you a better Battlefield player. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at infantry combat and weapon control, focusing on how you can get an advantage over the competition and come out on top in firefights. So without further ado, here are 5 basic, 5 intermediate, and 5 advanced strategies for infantry gameplay in Battlefield 5. Strafing while shooting, one of the classics of basic battlefield training that so many of us get wrong. Because while strafing does ultimately make you a harder target, it also increases the base spread of any of the weapons you're really using, and depending on the target you're coming up against, it isn't really that beneficial. The ground rules for strafing while shooting in Battlefield 5 or Battlefield as general are however relatively clear. If you're in a close quarter scenario, especially when you're using SMGs, strafing is almost always beneficial and at any ranges where you're coming up against enemies that have accuracy reliant weapons. Those usually are the bolt actions, the bolt action carbines, the AT rifle guns and the SLRs and semi-automatics. Strafing will make you significantly harder to hit, however the effectiveness of that is decreased the faster the fire rate of that semi-auto weapon is and is relatively slim when going up against fully automatic weapons when taking into account that your own both aimed and spread based accuracy is likely reduced when actually strafing back and forth. So choose when to strafe wisely. The use of hipfire is another one of those, which sometimes even divides the community, because there are those out there who truly detest even the thought of hipfiring weapons, and those who absolutely love just going Rambo with a Tommy gun in close encounter combat and hipfiring away every individual they can come across. Really the rule when it comes to hipfire is relatively simple. If you can accurately hipfire, hipfire is always better. Not only because you do not have the delay of aiming down sight before being able to shoot, but also because you have a better overview of what's going on around you, which is why it's so important in close quarter situations. Thus, if you're using an SMG or other weapon that is decently equipped for hip fire in close encounter combat, you should always be using hip fire, but knowing at what distance your hip fire becomes less effective than ADS is very much also a matter of getting familiar with the weapon you're using and choosing carefully when to engage with hip fire or not. The next one is simple and has been part of the Battlefield franchise for forever it feels and that is to melee correctly. In terms of both Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, the mechanics are essentially identical such that if you damage a target enough, you can finish them off with a single melee hit and that is actually a lock on, meaning that really you're just going to get a free kill. And that's where melee really is used successfully most effectively and thus in my opinion you want the melee weapons with the highest single damage per swipe or per stab and not the the overall fastest DPS. Thus, going around with a revolver, shooting everybody once, and then knifing them with some of the heavier knives or other melee weapons available is usually the best way to panic when a firefight when using a secondary or when you get in a pinch and don't know how to take down your enemy. Then we have, of course, health activation. In Battlefield 5, attrition is a big part of how to be successful on the battlefield and hinders many players. I too often see players activating their health as soon as they get shot, when really you need to be paying attention to when you can next get healed up. Are there medics around you that are likely to heal you? Or is there a resupply station, a health station around that's going to help you out? And if not, and you're going to regenerate, let's say to 70 or 80 health, and you're not fighting, say, a sniper or somebody who can body shot you with that much damage, strategically you maybe want to save those bandages for a little bit later and that's what I find myself doing frequently and really gaining an advantage over my enemy by just letting the auto regen kick in and getting back up to 70-80 health especially with the assault class and not yet having to actually use my med kit. In certain scenarios of course you always need to but don't be too quick to press that C button or whatever button it is on your controller to quickly heal up after every single firefight. You may find that you're going to want to heal up after the next firefight when you truly are at low HP and have lost more than just 10 or 15 health. Then lastly, in our basics category, we have the understanding of ammo resupply crates and the different types of ammo resupplies there are out there. 
Now to start off with, there is the pouch, which only resupplies your primary and secondary ammo. Then there is the crate, which gives you, besides resupplying the primary and secondary ammo, also one additional gadget if you can carry one. That is usually in the form of, for example, mines, rocket launchers, AT grenades, or even smoke grenades if you're a medic. And then there is, of course, the ammo stations and resupply stations on the map, either connected to tank resupply stations or just on themselves on their own, which can be built or are pre-built in certain scenarios on the map. Those don't only resupply both your primary and secondary ammo, they also resupply your entire gadgets and give you a new grenade, something I find especially useful when spamming out grenades at my enemies, especially when I'm a support player and running with the pesky, relatively unpopular impact grenades. With that, we move on to the intermediate. And here things get a little bit more advanced, but for many, a lot of these tips will still be quite familiar. The first, for example, the crouch sprint and crouch shooting. Everybody knows that when you crouch sprint, you are a lot quieter than when you are actually sprinting full while standing, but you're not really slower. You also have a lower profile. Nevertheless, I countlessly come across players who are trying to sneak up on me while walking without crouching, and thus, when the footsteps at least are working in Battlefield 5, are audible from a mile away, and there's really no surprise that they then get shot in the face when I'm waiting for them around that corner. The second part of crouch sprinting, however, is crouch shooting, because when you crouch down, you actually have less vertical recoil on pretty much every weapon in Battlefield 5. And we're not talking about a little bit of a vertical recoil decrease, we're talking about 25% across the board, which is quite significant when you pay attention to the specialization decrease on vertical recoil, which is actually only 20%. In other words, it's more effective to crouch and fire your weapon in terms of recoil control, vertically speaking, than it is to actually equip a weapon with vertical recoil decreasing specializations. I should also add, if you choose to go prone for whatever reason, your vertical recoil is even further decreased over the previously crouch value by 20%. In other words, you have almost half the amount of recoil when prone than when you're standing up and firing your weapon. And this is across the board from assault rifles to LMGs, semi-automatics, or even bolt actions. No Battlefield game will be complete without explosions, which is what my next tip in the intermediate category focuses on, lower damage from explosions by going prone. This is universally useful, but especially so with the AP mines, which, thanks to their slightly increased delay on explosion, now actually give you the opportunity, if you're quick, to go prone and take little to actually no damage, and you go under an AP mine. That is exclusive to the AP mine in terms of the heftiness of the damage reduction, but in general, explosives are less damaging to you as player if you're prone than when you're standing or crouched. Next up, we have a classic point of debate when it comes to battlefield games, to tap fire, to burst fire, or to go full auto. Of course, this is a decision that depends both on the weapon and the engagement distance, but I'd like to point out that burst firing specifically is highly effective on a number of weapons out there. A lot of these slow firing SMGs are absolutely deadly accurate when burst fired. I'm thinking here of weapons such as the MP40, but also weapons even as high firing as the MAB38. But where this is especially useful as well is when it comes to the assault rifles, such as the STG, even the Riberol, but especially the Sturmgewehr 1.5, and almost mandatory on weapons such as the M1907 SL. Those really only can extend to their full engagement distance by burst firing. They lose only marginally in terms of their damage output and time to kill on target, but gain massively in accuracy and recoil control, and that's because of the way that recoil models work in Battlefield 5, which we'll explore a little bit later on in this video. Second to last for the intermediate category of tips and tricks, we have when to shoot and when to hold your fire. Target choice and target prioritization. Really only saying that means a lot to most players on the battlefield, but implementing it perfectly is a whole nother story, because choosing the right target to take out in a multi-target situation is a matter of experience and also practice, but it is extremely important when taking on multiple people at a time. Just as important it is to make sure you don't shoot at people you can't take out and give away your position when you're, for example, going on a flank. This is something I see plenty of relatively unexperienced players doing out there, simply shooting at whatever they think they have a chance of taking out, but not what they're certain they can take out giving away their position and usually resulting in a quick death from an other player that is alerted to their position and the flanking maneuver they're trying to pull off. 
Lastly, then we have gadget use, and this is something close to heart for me personally, because Battlefield 5 infantry combat is not only about the primary and secondary weapons, but really also about the available gadgets to the different classes, and in my opinion, that is even more the case in Battlefield 5. Now, the frag grenade launcher and Piat days for close quarter infantry combat may be gone thanks to some much needed nerfs, but absolutely the assault, medic support, and scout classes still have game changing gadgets available that people really just don't use enough. Specifically, what comes comes to mind here are the AT grenades for the support class, the smokes for the medic, specifically the smoke launcher, for moving up on position or blocking enemy fire when you've got a heavy MMG emplacement or an enemy tank that is bearing down on you from a certain angle, and the spotting flare for the scout. Extremely powerful in clearing objectives when people are hiding. My general advice here is use your gadgets more and make sure you're using those gadgets as frequently as possible, not only for yourself, but also for your team. And with that, we move on to the advanced category of tips and tricks. A lot of the things on this list are things even I myself don't in practice very often follow because I'm just not that good of a player just yet. I'm working on it, I try my best, but it doesn't always work out just that way. The first is the gun appropriate playstyle. This means aggressive versus defensive. Mostly there is of course a little bit of leeway between those two. Example is ZH29, making sure you're at the perfect engagement distance on a flank, possibly even on a position of slight elevation and taking out enemies from there while they're distracted by other enemies moving in closer on them. Versus the SMG playstyle which is all about getting up in people's faces, closing the distance with the help of smoke if needed and hip firing down as many people as you possibly can. With weapons such as shotguns and bolt actions there are different playstyles again but making sure you're using a weapon as effectively as possible by focusing on its playstyle is a great way to go from a good to a very good player and to massively improve your effectiveness with any given category or class of weaponry in Battlefield 5. The next one is one that most people just don't like doing. It's the falling back and reflanking. Because once you commit to an attack and objective, most players just do or die mentality, go at it, and usually fail. But very often, a much smarter move, not only so that your squad mates can spawn again, but also that you can stay alive, is actually throw up a distraction with the help of a grenade or smoke and retreat to a better piece of cover. Recognizing that situation, recognizing when you have to do so is again a matter of experience and why this is in the advanced category of tips and tricks for this video. But if you try and focus on that and you let yourself into the option that you can actually retreat, you'll find it being more successful more often than you actually thought it would be. You don't always get shot in the back and very often you can make a safe and hastily retreat if timed correctly and live to fight another day. Then of course something that is very important for Battlefield 5, a map flow where the enemies are. Paying attention to the minimap to figure out where your dying enemies and dying friendlies are and which objectives they're going to take next. What most likely common pathing are the enemies taking to push from say objective A to objective B. These are matters of experience, but consciously thinking about them is what really makes a massive difference to the successfulness of my gameplay, especially when playing together with squad mates on comms. Because we're actively talking about where is the enemy going to move next and how do we best intercept them. Going with the Zerg can be fun, but if you truly want to be most effective for yourself and your team and don't want to share every kill between three other eager players, then your best bet is going with a small group preferably your squad, on a flanking maneuver or interception maneuver to try and take back an objective, defend an objective, or even get behind the enemy's main line. This is where knowing map flow, where your enemies are and the most common pathing is vital to succeeding on the battlefield. The next we have a classic, across all FPS genres of games, crosshair positioning is part of the game, and pre-aim is no secret strategy and yet it's something that few can truly master, myself included, this is one of the things, in my opinion, on this list where I am weakest on. Not only should you be having your crosshairs either on body shot or headshot levels at all times, really when rounding corners, you should be thinking about where your enemies are most likely round those corners and pre-aiming those corners accordingly. If you know there's an enemy, you can even pre-fire around the corner to make sure you get the drop on them. Now this is all situational, but with good practice, crosshair positioning makes a massive difference. If you've in any way ever watched a little bit of CSGO professional play, you'll see that in that game, it is the bread and butter of some of the best players out there, knowing exactly where each player is going to be and having their crosshairs over wherever they're going to end up before they even know that's where they're going. 
And lastly, another piece of advice that I myself am yet to fully implement. In Battlefield 5, each weapon has a unique and individual recoil pattern. It's not just upwards and to the right or upwards and to the left. Actually, depending on the weapon, mostly they either go first left, then right, then central, or right, then left, then central. Some weapons even go back and forth multiple times, but depending on the weapons, they have a unique and relatively predictable recoil path. And I don't only mean that vertically, but also in terms of their so unpredictable and so uncontrollable horizontal recoil, which has replaced spread for the most part in Battlefield 5 as range limiting balancing factor for weapons. In other words, if you correctly learn to compensate perfectly for an individual weapon's recoil pattern, you can essentially negate most of the horizontal recoil out there, giving you a significantly more accurate, more range effective version of that weapon to what 95 if not 99% of your competition on the battlefield out there is going to be using. Now, I'd love to know down below in the comments what you think of these tips and tricks, what are the most important ones that I've forgotten, and which of these do you find useful or do you still struggle to implement? So leave that as well as of course your usual video suggestions for future level up videos down below in the comments or hit me up with them on Twitter. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.